born on this earth, that it was as if God entering this earth in the form of Jesus was giving up while on earth some of what it would ordinarily mean to be God. So that Jesus grew up dependent not only on his heavenly father, but dependent upon uh, the brothers and sisters, his parents that were on the earth. And so there is a dependence upon uh, humankind and ultimately a dependence upon his father. I think that the life that Jesus led lived was a model of how we are supposed to approach the Father. Just as Jesus could do nothing without the power of the Father, we can do nothing without the power of the Father. Yes, Jesus is always related, dependent upon the Father. Doctor? Doctor Jamal Bedoui. Does the Quran accept the Bible? If yes, why not? Does the Quran? Does the Quran accept the Bible? If yes, why not accept Jesus as divine? Two pronged answers. The first one, the word Bible does not appear anywhere in the Quran. I think that might sound surprising to some. We know that the Bible is a book of books. 63, 66 in the Protestant version, 73 in the Catholic version, each one of them, of course, believe that this is the complete and, uh, and full word of God. We know that the, old, the Bible is divided into Old Testament and New Testament. In the, New, in the Old Testament, the first five books, the Pentateuch, are believed to be the Torah. The Quran used the term Torah if it refers to something or part of the Old Testament. But even the terminology used in the Qur'an to refer to the Torah does not mean the first five books. Because the Qur'an speaks about what Moses received. Whereas we find that in the, the Torah, as defined by our Jewish and, and Christian brethren, it says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 34 towards the end, Moses, the man of God, died and was buried. Obviously that was not received on Mount Sinai. That's why some biblical scholars believe that this was written by someone else other than Moses, probably Joshua. The Qur'an does not speak about that, speak about the direct revelation to Moses. Secondly, the Qur'an doesn't speak anywhere about the New Testament, because we all know the New Testament is the four Gospels and the other 23 books, which are written by people who, as you know, some of them, as uh, uh, Reverend um, uh, Burns knows, uh, were not eyewitnesses. Half of the New Testament, 13 books are attributed to Paul, at least, maybe 14, they differ on the 14th, uh, who was not an eyewitness of Jesus, peace be upon him. Jesus definitely was not teaching from the Gospels written after him by the four Gospel writers. When the Quran speaks about the Gospel or Injil giving to Jesus, it doesn't talk about the four Gospels. And when in the New Testament itself we find references that Jesus went around teaching the Gospel, he wasn't carrying John, Luke, Matthew and, uh, and, uh, and Luke under his arms. This were written a long time after. So when the Quran speaks about the Gospel, it speaks about the specific revelation given to Jesus, peace be upon him. For that reason, a Muslim would have an open mind towards the Bible. And the Quran answered that question actually, especially in Surah number 5, verses 49 and 50, which says, We reveal to you, O Muhammad, this book, that is the Quran, confirming an interpretive statement, what remained intact of the revelation before it, whether it's Torah, Injil, Zabur given to David, but it says also, wa muhaymin alay, and a guardian over it. That means that the Qur'an is the criterion for the Muslim to determine and discern which was indeed the word of God, which was the interpretation of the human. A Muslim would not reject the Bible offhand, as some people might think. But he believes that the Bible contains the word of God. And as a Muslim, I cannot justify to my conscience to read the Ten Commandments, which are repeated in the Old Testament, New Testament, and the Qur'an, and say, I don't believe in the Bible. What dispute do I have with this? The Muslim would accept anything in the Bible that confirms to the Qur'an as the standard and the last well-preserved revelation. Other ideas presented by humans, thoughts that some people, as some biblical scholars said, a poetical, mythological way of expressing their feeling or reaction to Jesus, that is their opinion. There are human beings with all good intention, they could be right or they could be wrong. Reverend Burns. I was once a Catholic, and he says, you talked about how Jesus, the so-called man, God, affected your life. 
all Christians have hard time accepting Jesus as God. How did this acceptance affect you? Didn't you question this idea? What, what was the last statement? Okay, all Christians have hard time accepting Jesus as God. How did this acceptance affect you? Didn't you question this idea? For the last 20 years, I have questioned that idea in the sense that I've taken the idea out again and again and looked at it. And one of the exciting things about doing what we're doing this evening is it's forced me to rethink this, to rethink this, this uh, uh, what I think is a very difficult question, but I think it is something at the center of what Christianity is. How has it affected me? I was raised in the uh, Episcopal tradition. Each tradition within Christianity uh, emphasizes certain things. In the Baptist tradition, for instance, a Baptist will talk about inviting Jesus into his or her life and Jesus coming into that life and becoming a part of, of my life and living with me. I don't remember as an Episcopal being confronted with that notion. Uh, somehow I grew up in Beeville, Texas. I didn't even really know that there were Baptists. There was a big church called the First Baptist Church, but I didn't really knew, know what they did in there. You know, to me, God was someone way up there, way up there, the transcendent God, the all-powerful God. And that is a part of my understanding of God now. But the notion that God is someone who comes down here, who comes across the way and speaks not from the palace, but who walks amongst us. Walking not as a king. Jesus could have come as King Agrippa. He could have come as Festus, the ruler I spoke of, but he came in the form of a, of a person who would grow up with a father who is a working man. That, to me, affected my life in the sense that it makes me think now of a God who is not just up there, but who's down here, and then a God who comes and lives in my life in a way that is as close as the skin is to my blood vessels. Um, that's how it's affected my life. To break the sequence, I'm going to ask a question to both as addressed here to Dr. Jamal Badoui and Reverend Burns. What role did Jesus play in the beginning of correction as described in Genesis? Now what role did Jesus play in the beginning of creation as described in Genesis? I read a passage from uh, uh, Paul's letter to Christians in Colossae and he has this litany of uh, that goes on and on about Jesus and who Jesus is and it speaks about Jesus being involved in creation. All things were created by him and for him and through him. I have great difficulty understanding what that means uh, because that gets into the whole question of the pre-existence of Christ. Again, Christians traditionally have claimed that the, the person Jesus did not simply come to existence when he was born 2,000 years ago or so, that he had pre-existed, just as he continued to exist uh, after uh, resurrection to this very moment. Uh, I believe that he played a part. I believe that if you, again, want to look at it as a partnership, he played a part with a partnership with God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. Now that looks to people who are not a part of the Christian tradition as three people who are sort of all holding hands working together and that seems like polytheism and and I think that's a very important objection but I've thought about that a lot there are more than there is there is more than one part to who I am I am father I am husband I am son I am teacher I am minister no. I am, uh, uh, in years past, a Cub Scout leader and Little League coach. Uh, and not only that, there are parts within me that seem to be in conflict, parts in me that seem to be in harmony. I submit that in each person there are two in one, three in one, four in one. So to me, the notion of the Trinity is not at all 